Welcome in to another edition of Conversations with Paul Brown. We are at Paul's. Pets are worth saving. It's Anderson County's animal shelter. Dr. Kim Sanders is Anderson County Paws' veterinarian. I was born in Anderson County, um, lived here until my parents purchased a business in Greenville County, so I moved to, to Greenville when I was five. Um, but I didn't get very far, so I've, I've always been close by. I went to school in Greenville, and then I transferred to Clemson. Um, so I finished there before I went to vet school in Grenada, St. George's University. You went to school in Traveler's Rest. I did. But what was that experience like? It was before Traveler's Rest was the cool place to live. It was very rural, very country, but I, I loved it there. So at what point did you decide, you know what, I think I may want to be a veterinarian? I was at least three or four years old when I decided I wanted to be a veterinarian and that was the game plan the whole way through. I, I always knew what my plan in life would be. And what was there that triggered that interest? My mom had horses when I was little and that was just always my passion. My goal was to become a, a specialist and do equine reproduction. Um, when I graduated vet school I came back to Greenville, back home to my mom and uh, started a, a job in private practice with small animals in Greenville and then from there I've worked at a couple of other shelters that were local before ending up at the Anderson um, Humane Society low-cost spay-neuter clinic and then that's kind of how I became aware of, of Anderson County Paws. You went to the islands to get your degree. I did. What prompted that and how cool was it living down there? It was amazing. Grenada is a gorgeous island. It's very safe. It's very small. Much like living in the Traveler's Rest area, everybody knew everybody. Everybody knows your business and everybody's a friend. I, I didn't want to leave. I loved it there. I tracked large animal all through school, so that was all I ever intended to do. Um, but I, you know, you know, when you make a plan, there's always that right turn. And, and somewhere along the way, I was introduced to shelter medicine, and I knew very quickly that that's where I would spend the rest of my life. Women have become veterinarians at a higher number than ever before. Anderson County has its fair share of lady vets. We do, absolutely. Is the message of the necessity of spade and neutering getting out there, do you think, more than it did? five or ten years ago? I think it's absolutely becoming more widely known and I think it's becoming more accessible. You know, we do have the low-cost spay-neuter clinic here in Anderson, so we are fortunate for that. Um, and then PAWS is also offering a community cat program, so we're doing surgeries for cats as well. I've also just applied for an $80,000 grant from PetSmart for funding for, um, for public surgeries, and it would include Pickens County, Abbeville County, and Anderson County. So we're, we're trying to all work together to promote the same message and to provide public spay-neuter to decrease the, the euthanasia rates, to decrease the intake in the shelters. We're saving well over 90% of the animals that come into our facility every, every month. Um, we take in about 6,000 animals a year. So that, that's quite the feat. We did over 4,700 surgeries last year just in the shelter alone. And that's with the help of some other veterinarians too? Absolutely, it is. We have three or four other contract veterinarians that will come in and do surgeries. We can hold about 150 dogs comfortably. So when we reach that limit, we really we ask the public for their help to come in to foster, to adopt. We come up with any sort of, of skit or, or play and, and try to get these animals moved out you know, into homes so that they can be fostered. We do have a robust uh, transport program to the north. So we have a couple of groups in New Jersey and Vermont that will pull animals from us. They used to do more than they do now. Um, since becoming a no-kill facility, some of these rescues want to help other shelters that are still euthanizing animals. So that, you know, it's a catch-22. So we've, we've had to get kind of creative to, to move animals out. But our adoptions have greatly increased. And every time we've ever had a need, the public has been there and stepped up and, and come to the door and fostered and, and adopted for us as well. So that's been fantastic when the community is really able to support us and help us when we need it. Tell me about the staff here at Paws. We have about 30 staff members. Half of those are, are part-time. We work really hard every single day to, to take care of the animals. We do get inmates as well that will come in and help with the cleaning in the morning for the large dogs. Um, but it takes all of us working really hard every day to, to make all of this happen. And you also rely somewhat on volunteers. Absolutely. Talk about that. We love our volunteers. Um, we get dozens of volunteers every week that come in and walk dogs or clean or you know, do paperwork for us and, and volunteers are allowed to come in and do absolutely anything they want. They, they help us by going to off-site events 
planning the adoptions, um, you know, participating in that as well. They get to know the dogs, and so they help us market dogs and, and get to know what the dogs like or what they don't like. Um, so volunteers are a, a huge asset to PAWS. Somebody's watching, hearing, and they say, you know, that's something I want to do. How do they go about getting involved, getting in touch? And do they go through any type of training? We do. We have a volunteer orientation. Um, we hold it once a month during the week and then once a month on a, on a Saturday as well to fit everyone's schedule. You come down, spend a couple hours, get to know about PAWS and, and the activities that you can become involved in. So you can come down, you can um, email us at pawsrescue at andersoncountysc.org um, or you can, can try to get through on the phone as well. With social media becoming such an important part of all our lives, You've been able to utilize that too? Absolutely. It's been fantastic. You know, we can post a plea or put up a little video of a particular dog and, and people will just flood in to, to adopt that dog. We had a, a beagle recently that we put a post up about and a couple actually flew from Michigan to pick her up. They had recently lost their dog and pictures worth a thousand words. They knew they didn't even have to, to meet the dog. That was it. And, and they flew down and adopted her right away and took her home. So we still get updates from them as well. Our guest is Dr. Kim Sanders. She is the veterinarian here in Anderson County Paws, and we'll return to continue our conversation with her. Recently, one of your counterparts, Holt Hopkins, got a big award, and it was based on what you all had done here. When you first heard about that, were you at all surprised that he got the award? I was not. Um, I had to, to write a letter for his nomination as well, and he's, he's been a remarkable mentor along the way. You know, he, um, he took a, a pretty gutsy move hiring, hiring me to come in, and when he didn't know much about animal sheltering, and um, we, we both jumped in, and he was very open to new ideas and to change, and he, he directed me in the right, right way every time I needed assistance with someone in the county. Um, and I think that it was just remarkable, you know, the amount of change that we brought to Anderson County Shelter in a, a very short period of time is, is almost unheard of in the animal sheltering world. So it was, it was fantastic. Could that have been possible within the time span that it was achieved? had it not been for his leadership? Absolutely not. You know, leadership is crucial to, to any operation, but when you have an operation that was failing or, or really struggling, um, to be able to turn it around like we did, you know, it, it took him pointing me in the right direction and introducing me to the right people, and, and it took us trusting one another to, to do the right thing and to make it work. What do you want to achieve next here? Whew. I have a lot of big goals for Anderson. Um, one of the, the biggest projects we're working on right now is expanding our dog park. We have run out of space. You know, with the number of dogs that we have here on a daily basis, the number of volunteers that we have, the number of people coming to adopt, we don't have enough separate play areas for the dogs. And so we've been working really hard to fundraise. We've had a generous donor give us a, a $100,000, and so we're trying to match those funds. And then we will also have in-kind donations from the county so that we'll be able to get started very soon. And it's going to go on this property. It is. We have 12 acres here. The park will consist of 10 different separate play areas for the dogs. We'll have an amphitheater so we can do movies in the, in the evenings. Um, we'll have a walking trail so the public can come here and, and exercise. You know, we're, we're going to have an outdoor facility for children to come and have birthday parties or, or different types of events. So we're really looking to make this more of a community center to welcome people here. Um, you know, since it is a, a county-owned property, we want everyone to be able to use this facility as well. And where are we in the process? We are just finishing up right now with one of our architects waiting on our drawings and our blueprints so that we can get started. It'll probably take close to a year to get everything completed like it's supposed to be. We'll, we'll have a lot of landscaping to do um, and then the trail mapping out as well. Are there other counties in the country that have done this that you can kind of glean from? Not that I'm aware of. Um, I've visited every dog park that I could. I've done tons of research and looking at the things that I wanted. And when I sat down with my landscape architect, I, I knew what I wanted, but I wasn't able to just put it into a picture. And so I was explaining to him the way I wanted things to work and, and how much I wanted the community to be able to use the, the facility and it be a, a friendly dog park. And so working together, we were really able to kind of hash out a, a one of a kind plan. Anderson County has been more than gracious to me. The shelter has been fantastic. 
fantastic. You know, everyone has been extremely supportive. The county is supportive. The people are supportive. You know, everyone wants to do what's best for the animals here and then take care of the people of Anderson County as well. We certainly need donations. You know, money is always an issue, um, but we can also use in-kind donations, whether that be concrete pavers or benches or time or shrubbery, uh, you know, any, any sort of construction material that we may be using in order to do that. So if you guys have any ideas, please reach out to us as well. We use tons of towels um, on a daily basis, so we, we always need towels, blankets, um, cleaning supplies are always in heavy demand, whether it be paper towels or Windex, you know, any, any of your basic cleaners. Um, and then canned food is always a, a big one for us as well. That's a large expense with dry food for dogs and for cats, so we, we use a lot of that as well. We have a large community cat program for Anderson County, so we spay or neuter those cats, and, and they're allowed to live outside once they've been vaccinated and altered. Um, so we, we're fortunate to not have a ton in the shelter most of the time. We try not to take in more than just dogs and cats, but we do have some really hardworking goats that, that keep our, um, our, our back areas nice and, and cut down for us, so they work really hard out here. Most people want to do the right thing, and most people don't want to bring their animal to the animal shelter. You know, sometimes they just fall on a hard time and they need help with food, you know, if they can't afford dog food or cat food, and before they would just try to turn their animal in. So we've really tried to turn that around and be a community resource. We have a, a great food bank. If the animals are spayed or neutered, they can come up here and, and we'll help them with food. If not, then we'll help get them spayed or neutered. If they need medical care that they may not be able to afford, we can see if that's something we can assist with. Uh, we work closely with animal control if, if people are in need of dog houses or runners or shavings during the winter when it becomes cold or straw. You know, we, we really want to be that resource for our community and help them keep their animal. It's also less expensive for us to help someone keep that animal than it is to take it in and try to find it another home when it's already in a loving environment. So that's one of our, our really big key differences is we, you know, we really want to help people keep their pets in Anderson County. And again, the public can help you with that. Absolutely. Those are, are where those donations come in handy. Dog kennels, dog houses, bedding, you know, any of those basic supplies that, that may help someone keep their pet. So this is Missy. She is one of our resident cats. Uh, Missy was turned in with her brother, Missy and Oliver, and they have both been declawed. They were very old and their owner had become sick and had to move in with their daughter and so they were no longer able to take care of her because the daughter uh, was v very allergic to cats. So they came here and uh, they weren't thriving. They both got upper respiratory infections, they both had to have feeding tubes, and now they are both hyperthyroid, so they are on lifelong medication. So <laughs> they, um, they just by default ended up living at the shelter. So both of them live here now. They work really hard to help keep surgery rolling, um, keep all of our patients nice and warm on the recovery mat and uh, and they're quite talkative so you know every every animal has a really incredible story that comes through here there are some that we we just absolutely fall in love with and some of them spend time with our dog trainer trying to correct those behaviors you know if if someone adopts an animal and they're having trouble with it our dog trainer can go out and assist them again to, to do whatever it takes to keep that dog to to correct that behavior that they're having so you know we we really get attached to some of these these great animals that, that come in here on a daily basis. We can look back on some of those really incredible stories and know that we, we did the right thing and that we saved a life and that really mattered for that family and for that pet. You have kind of become a model for some other neighboring counties that have right. struggled. How have you been able to step in and help. I've adopted some of the other local shelters. So Pickens County has been really gracious and we went in and did a shelter assessment. We were able to show them exactly what we had done and, and teach them how to save lives the same way. We've assisted greatly in Lawrence County. We've helped with Abbeville County. We've certainly met with Greenwood County. So, you know, it's, it's not just one county and we're done. It's, you know, starting with the upstate and fixing every shelter that we possibly can in order to save as many lives as possible. We, we were a, a role model that it's doable in a very short period of time and, and a lot of these people struggle and they don't know who to reach out to. So for us to be able to have such an impact, not just in Anderson, but across the upstate has been an incredible feat for us. I get the sense that this is more than a job for you. This is definitely more than a job. This was my calling in life. I've never been happier, never been prouder of what I'm doing and, and I know that uh, that Anderson County is the place that I'll be and saving lives is just the, the best thing I've ever ever been able to do. Thank you for all of the hard work that you do. Half of all of us who live in Anderson County. Dr. Kim Thank Sanders you. 
has been our guest. We want to thank her for spending time with us. And we want to thank each of you for tuning in. And we would invite you to be back with us next week, same time, for our next edition of Conversations with Paul Brown. Until then, take care, everybody.